hopping around like Justin likes to do. Hey guys, welcome <laughs> to the Bluefin live stream dedicated to Cowboy Bebop, the classic anime. Feels weird to say classic for something that came out in the 90s, but hey, it's 2021. Uh, we're going to be going a deep dive into our history with Cowboy Bebop, uh, how amazing it is, you know, how it stands up, how it influenced other properties going forward. And during this live stream, we are going to give away one of these bad boys. It's the Swordfish 2 from Tomashi Nations. It is an incredible. Let me take a little post-it note. That's my cheat sheet here. You guys don't need to see that. It is an incredible, incredible piece. You'll definitely want to add it. Uh, you know, those of, those who have been to our live streams before know that we love to chat with you guys. We love to answer your questions. Love to, for you guys to interact with us. And that's how we determine who gets the prize. Totally indiscriminate. It's uh, it's it's the tastemaker's way to do it. So make sure to comment uh, below. Uh, and if you're watching this after it's live, you know we'll wait a couple days. Definitely leave a comment, leave a like, leave a share, and uh, yeah, we'll pick a winner to win one of these bad boys, and it'll be great. Uh, of course, we're celebrating the spring into savings uh, at bluefinbrands.com. We have a ton of bundles on the website. You know, we talked yesterday about the uh, the Marvel ones. You know, we have the Puny God bundle that has Hulk and Loki. You can recreate that scene from the Avengers. It's only one hundred dollars for both SH figure arts. Or if you want something a little bit bigger, you know, we have this one. I guess is off camera, so I'll bring it over here. Uh, we have the Titan Bundle. It's got uh, Thanos, it's got Hulk, and it's got Captain America, the Cap versus Cap Captain America SH figure arts. You get all three of these for only $150. Dragon Ball Bundles, we have Street Fighter Bundles. So much going on at bluefinbrands.com for spring and savings. Make sure to check it out. Also doing an enormous giveaway, and I talk too much. So, Justin, why don't you describe the giveaway for these fine folks at home? Sure. If you head on over to bluefinbrands.com slash contest, there you can enter to win a million different Gundam prizes. Uh, the the logo is kind of ambiguous, but trust that we have uh, multiple winners, multiple prizes. Um, Mr. AJ over there is curating a wonderful list for me so we can share all the amazing model kits and Gunpla that you're going to be able to get your hands on. Uh, very excited about this one. It's There are daily entries. There are uh, action items that allow you to get multiple entries to increase your chances. So definitely check it out. And also be sure to follow us at Bluefin Brands for all sorts of news announcements and giveaways. Mm -hmm. It's a really long list. Uh, so almost a lot of people are going to win <laughs> a lot of prizes. And there's a perfect grade on there. You know, there's oh, someone's, so, someone's going to win the RX 78 perfect grade unleashed and uh, big can't find that in stores. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a big box. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's kind of a project, you know, I, uh, I have the boxes on my show. It you have the box? Oh, it does. I forgot. I have one. Oh, sorry. Is, oh, it, is, is it nearby? It's... One second. <laughs> oh, well, he yeah, he's turned off the camera. He's not wearing pants. That's why. <laughs> it's what's holding up his monitor. <laughs> yeah. There wow, you go. that he was nice to see where it was hidden. Oh, yeah. I have uh, PG near me at all times. That's, <laughs> that's how I live life. <laughs> it's just near you so that if you need to build like a part for today. Yeah, yeah. You, you never know. So how far into your backlog is that? Is that since the perfect grade? Does it jump to the top of the list, or is it something it's that? It's so far. It's so far down the list. Would you say you have more than a hundred kits to build before that? I have well over two hundred for sure. Before that one. Before that one. Oh my gosh! All right. Well. We know Mr. Clark isn't going to want to win this one because he's already got one. So, uh, you know, <laughs> enter at bluefinbrands.com slash contest. Someone's got to win. Might as well be you. Uh, and just one final bit of housekeeping. If you were in the New York area, Tamashii Nations is having an incredible pop-up uh, in Manhattan. Uh, you can go to tamashinations.com. Uh, it'll give you all of the information, all the details. Uh, they also have a lot of cool uh, props, costumes, uh, and uh, accoutrements from the Godzilla vs. Kong movie. Uh, you can just walk by. It's right in the window. It's some, some really cool stuff. And then go inside. They have on display some of the figures that aren't, aren't out yet. They have the King Kong and Godzilla uh, monster arts uh, that will be dropping in June. They also have displays for the Cooler SH Figure Arts, which just dropped on Premium Bandai and is going very, very quick. So if you want a Cooler SH Figure Arts, you, you, I jump on sooner rather than later. I know, I know, some, I know some stuff. Uh, and also, <laughs> no uh, some stuff. we can't be specific, but uh, <laughs> but it's going quick, so so jump on it. Uh, they also have the hit SH figure arts that's uh, going to be closing, I believe, uh, at the end of uh, next month. I believe. Uh, I apologize if my dates are wrong, but they have that on display, so you can see just how awesome some of these figures are. So uh, make sure to go uh, check out Tomashi Nation's pop up shop in Manhattan if you're in the area and you feel safe. 
Uh, they are having limited capacity due to the pandemic. Uh, so there may be a little bit of a line, but it is definitely worth it. They have metal builds there. They have solo choke again. They have figure arts. They have figure arts minis. They have robot spirits and anything that Tamashii Nations carries. Uh, you won't be sad. It's the largest collection of Tamashi Nations in a shop in uh, the United States. So don't okay. miss it. Yes, Justin. The SH Figure Arts hit closes March 21st at 10.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There you go. I was going to say it in March, but I don't want to be wrong. And it closes on my sister's birthday. Happy birthday. All right. So March 21st. So that means you have uh, you know, a little less than two weeks. So uh, yes. if, if you're looking for hit SH Figure Arts, uh, go to Premium Bandai and uh, pick it up. P.Bandai.com slash U.S. Sounds like you got a. Uh, it worked. Uh, Clayton was saying you're running out. Gonna have to buy it after this. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, we were really overwhelmed. Uh, you know, obviously we get excited when we get to announce new things from uh, Tomash Nation, especially on P Bandai. And we, you know, we had a feeling that Cooler was going to be something that people really, really wanted. You know, it's not. You know, it's a. It's it's a. It's kind of a secondary character, but it's got a real cool design. It's got a real cool relationship with some of the main characters, and but even us, we were blown out of the water with just the the reaction and uh, you know just all the people wanting to get this figure. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, it's a good one. Yes, yeah. but Thank this you. is not the cooler podcast. This is the Cowboy <laughs> Bebop podcast or live stream, whatever we want to call this in the digital media era. David. David here, Justin, AJ, and David Clark joining us again because he loves Cowboy Bebop so much that he is just oozing. Like, that's not – like, he actually shaved his head. That's Cowboy Bebop coming out top of his head. <laughs> right. Oh, he's going for the Spike Spiegel look. Got it. You, you need the candy cigarettes that get the one good puff. I just don't want to end up like here, so I like living. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Well, David, you're, uh, but let, let's go to you, the guest. Uh, you know, what's your history with Cowboy Bebop? Uh, when did you first watch it? Uh, when have you last watched it? And has your opinion changed in between those two two viewings? Oh, um, so like I, I started watching Bebop when it was on Adult Swim. Uh, you know, on Tsunami, it was one of like the core animes that was just always on, <laughs> and it. it it's like it's like a, a, there's a there's very few shows in life that I can literally watch over and over again. But like Bebop is one of the shows where if it's on, I'm like okay, yeah, I'll watch it. I know it's like less than thirty episodes, but I've seen them probably 10, 15 times. It's oh, so wow. in my life because it, it it was on for a while. <laughs> for a while so, but uh, yeah, it, it just it was just like a, a staple of being an anime fan, you know, uh, when when I was growing up. So it's definitely a irreplaceable part of my life. Awesome. What about you, AJ? Uh, what's your uh, What's your history with Cowboy Bebop? Uh, it's similar to Clark's. You know, I watched it on Adult Swim, Toonami. Uh, funny enough, is like Tom from Toonami is also voiced by Steve Bloom. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> like that's just amazing in itself. Uh, and I know we did the thing where we did like subs versus dubs, but this is the only anime I've only seen dubbed and i love it like i don't think i've i don't think i've ever looked <laughs> or watched the sub version or the japanese version uh but i don't know like there's something about the english version that i just can't get enough of uh definitely cowboy bebop was something like you know i related a lot more uh in college than i do now just because of their lifestyle is uh <laughs> broken hungry <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, Apparently, a million dollars isn't a lot of money in the future. It's not. I feel like they're always cashing in million dollar bounties. Yeah, they're like, "Where's the three million paid for this? Where's the one million paid for that?" <laughs> yeah, a spaceship. That's got to cost. Man. Yeah. So uh, definitely, Cowboy Bebop is definitely one of those influential ones to me, uh, and especially the music. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. What about you, Justin? What's your what's your history with uh, with with the Bebop? Well, it all began in the year of our Lord, 2021, about two weeks ago. <laughs> when I started watching it. Uh, but no, I dug it, man. I, I'd never seen it. You know, like uh, like they were saying, it was on Toonami. And, um, I, you know, I remember, you know, Gundam Wing and, and Dragon Ball, but I never got around to Cowboy Bebop. And so it was the very first experience for me. And uh, it's really cool. I, I dug it. It kind of has this Freak of the Week vibe, but at the same time, there's this overarching uh story and plot that's kind of intertwined in there so you, you really can't miss a beat so it's uh it's a really good show the music's incredible uh just the visuals are a lot of fun there's there's a lot of there's a lot of non-verbal cues in this show so you gotta really pay attention otherwise you'll you'll miss out on a lot of key elements a lot of emotion is expressed in this and through 
through nonverbals. And it's uh, it's a hard hitting, very impactful series. Love Chris, Coop, Chris Cooper is asking. He's also never seen it, so he's curious if it's something you can watch with the kids. So since you're fairly new and had just finished it, you know. Sure. So there, people do die on on screen. You know, there's some some bullet holes in some folks, um, but there's no like nudity, and um, there isn't really any swearing per se. There's just um, people get filled with holes every now and again. <laughs> Like in, like in a Roadrunner cartoon where then they just take a drink of water and it like filters out? Yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got the Acme shops so, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it has some pretty heavy themes, but I, I don't, I don't know how old your kids are to know if they'll be able to even pick up on that. There's a lot of relatable characters, you know, like Ed is pretty funny. And then of course the dog and then just the dynamic of this sort of family dynamic. I mean, think, think along the lines of like Guardians of the Galaxy in a way where, everyone in this ship doesn't necessarily belong together but it fits and so there's a lot of just sort of inter uh personal relationships that sort of blossom and i think that it it would work i know that if i was a child and i watched it i would enjoy it and i would mm-hmm. be able, i mean but that's coming from someone that watched robocop when they were six years old so <laughs> yeah different but, times like i think even when it came out I, or at least when it was airing i had was well like 12 at the time so you know that's not too young but you know it's an age <laughs> right yeah yeah i think it's important to realize that you know all kids are different like uh like uh, i have two sons uh one that i can show not graphic content to but you know something with a little more edge to it and then the one that probably wouldn't handle it well when they were when they were younger so uh so uh, you know your kids if you think they can handle a little you know kind of like that 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 Marvel PG thirteen type violence, uh, you know, they might be able to to, to swing this. Yeah, yeah I watched this kid. I, I turned out great. Granted, <laughs> after I watched Evangelion, like, nah, <laughs> like after that point, no, yeah, no holds bar. <laughs> I think I think there's a pretty big difference between Eva, Evangelion and Cowboy Bebop. I, it was, I think it was very very mild after watching yeah. the woman. <laughs> yeah, there's some judo chops, some kung fu kicks. There's smoking, so yeah. I mean, they smoke about six thousand cigarettes over the course of twenty six episodes. So, of course, of one episode, he smoke like he ate yeah. zero people. So, yeah, that that's true. <laughs> so that that's really it. I mean, it's 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 pretty tame in the grand scheme of things when it comes to uh, anime. Right, it's not Ninja Scroll where they're like crushing heads and blood going everywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some hardcore stuff in Ninja Scroll. <laughs> Can't wait for the Ninja Scroll uh, live stream one day. Uh, now, now, um, Tomasha Nations, you know, uh, like I said, we're giving away one of the swordfish. You know, we have the bundle for the swordfish and the vicious on sale at bluefinbrands.com. Uh, they also make a Spike Spiegel. Uh, you know, Spike is the protagonist, you know, of this series. Uh, you know, uh, Justin, what are, what are your thoughts on Spike Spiegel as, you know, your the main character of this, this, this franchise? Sure. Yeah, he's great, uh, especially with sort of like this kind of weird westerny almost like noir vibe to it you know like he's really cool and and he's laid back and he's kind of like captain kirk in a lot of ways where he just gets his butt kicked like all the time like the first episode shows that he can fight and that he's he can handle his own but then the other 25 episodes he just gets the crap beat out of him and it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of fun I, I dig it like he's he's not afraid to fight he he'll mix it up he'll he'll get into trouble and he's a, a troublemaker he's a bit of an instigator and he's he's a lot of fun and i think that his counterpart jet you know tries to you know keep him on a short leash but he's just he's untamable and it's it's awesome i think their dynamic alone is pretty awesome so i think when you talk about spike you also have to talk about jet and i think the two of them go great together mm-hmm. awesome aj what do you think oh uh, i think everything justin said is pretty true like i think he's a lovable character he's got a mean lean though like every time he's leaning on something it it just looks good that i remember when i saw like and he's just smoking that's really cool. Like <laughs> that's just a cool image. You know, he's he's that cool vibe. Um, and yeah, like you know, episode one, he's he's resourceful, I guess. Like he's you know, he put on that poncho, he put on like the sombrero, and they couldn't tell it was him. Um, you know, space Tijuana, <laughs> but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I think his character is lovable. And again, with Jet, you know, to me, Jet's always been like he's he's like a motherly figure to me. He's like you know, fine, you can leave, but you know, you're never welcome back. You know, Spike comes back. All right, come on back. <laughs> I can't quit you. Yeah, and yeah. he's always and he's always making him meals. Granted, it's not always like the exact meal he said. 
know, some what was it veg like pe- peppers and beef? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Spike is an amazing character. Yeah, it was fun. You mentioned him, you know, kind of leaning and smoking. Uh, one of the favorite picture, one of my favorite pictures that anyone at Bluefin took was uh, Ken, who's on our, who's on our account executive team. He uh, he took a picture, and so he took you know Spike's box and he turned it sideways, and he has Spike actually sitting on the box, smoking his little smoking his little cigarette that comes with the figure, and uh, it just was such a cool cool image. I liked it so. Good yeah. job, Ken, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Me and lean. <laughs> uh, uh, David, uh, Spike, does he does he work for you as, as a protagonist? Is is he, uh, yeah. is he someone that you uh, you like to follow and you can relate to? Yeah, no, I I, I thought he was great. You know, he's very he's very cool. Um, his fight scenes were always super cool to watch. In fact, other animes would just outright copy, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Naruto versus Neji. There's a part of that which is literally just. Spike's fight scene. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's kind of cool to see like, the influence he had on it. And then, of course, anything that Steve Bloom voices is just, just 100% perfection. So mm-hmm. um, that character is definitely uh, one of the anime greats. So. Well, you, uh, you were going through his, his, his list of credits earlier, and he's, uh, he's basically been on everything it's ever been animated yeah. in the history of all time. Transformers, Marvel, anime. I mean, like, he, 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 he's been multiple characters and and like in single scenes, <laughs> like talking to himself, you know, like the guy, <laughs> oh, the man without the voices, like the, the guy is amazing. <laughs> sure. It was the voice of Mickey and Steamboat Mickey in the twenties, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, from from A to Z. Uh, now, Justin, you mentioned Jet. Is uh, is, is he your favorite of the uh, ancillary characters? You know, are you pretty close? I I, I think I can relate to, relate very well to what AJ is saying. Like he's the responsible one on a ship full of just misfit toys man like he <laughs> he has his hands full with a lot of damaged folks and mm. he does his best uh, like metaphorically speaking keeping the ship together that includes the crew and he does a really good job of looking out for everyone and so he's he is a, an exceptional character on the show and and it would not have worked without him to say the least yeah, but David, uh, is there is there any other character other than uh, Spike that really stood out to you that uh, kind of stuck with you? Ed, yeah, <laughs> Ed, that's good. I don't. I, I've seen the show multiple times. No idea what's going on with Ed. Ed is just <laughs> a ball of madness, but it's hilarious madness. So I accept. It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was that one episode like they were tripping oh! or something like that with. Um... <laughs> Yeah, with mine. and uh, you know that episode was like wild and crazy. Like I think even Ed always talks like in third person, kind of kind of like Elmo, you know, like Ed does this or something like that. So yeah, yeah, Ed came out like out of left field for me. Like when 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 they were introduced, I'm like that. it was just it was nuts. And I, yeah. I know the character like that, and I actually can't think of any other character in anime that's <laughs> as weird as Ed in a serious setting. Like right. I, I like that. Like there's so and much going on to you. <laughs> totally. And when she when she had her first episode where she's just kind of alone on that desert planet and then just like hops in that bounty hunter's car in the trunk and just looks like a dead kid <laughs> and the lady gets arrested. Like she's like, I don't even know who that is. But and she's like kind of hitching a ride. It's so great. It's like you pop up in the trunk and there's just this dead child in your car. How do you explain that? Right. And uh, <laughs> it's just fantastic. I, I love her to death. Yeah. She's great, and then and then you know you find out about her father and how uh, he just kind of abandoned her, didn't even know where he left her, and uh, she she too is very very damaged and broken, and and um, it's just it's really crazy when you watch this series and you and you get to all these characters just kind of fun and and you're laughing, but then there's these weird serious moments that just really kind of just make your heart sink a little bit. It's it's crazy how impactful it is. It's kind of like, like that's like the episodic uh, like formula for them. You know, like you're introduced, you know, who they're trying to get for the day or for that episode. Then there's some like little antics. But like towards the end, you know, that music kicks up and then you're like, oh, it's serious again. Right. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> it's like when you get a Jaws theme, you're like, oh, here comes the shark. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Build up attention. Now, it wouldn't be, you know, Sci-fi wouldn't be great if there wasn't a ship involved, and you know the swordfish too. Uh, you know, plays a relatively important part in the show. So, uh, AJ, how does the swordfish stack up to you know uh, similar ships in other you know anime and sci-fi tropes? Oh, I mean, I I like the design of uh, swordfish too. Like it's, I'm trying to figure out the words for it, but it's just to me, 
it's simplistic, but at the same time, like it seems complicated in their world. You know, like it's got wheels, like a regular uh, plane that takes off, but like they're in space, and you know, space and gravity are <laughs> two things that confuse me in terms of science. Um, and, and you know, he said before, like he's been with that ship for a while. So there's history with it, and I just think overall it looks cool, especially with like the wings like flap up, like they fold up and then like they fold out, just like other ships. So I yeah. like the design. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it was red and black, so David loves it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right, immediately, just it was it was perfect from the, from the jump, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those. It's a it's a time period, Dave, where like everything is just like looks like junk, you know, like like a Star Wars. There and you the, go. And the, yeah, the Empire has all the cool looking ships and the rebels have just like scrap. And mm-hmm. so it's a lot like that where everyone else's ship just looks like garbage. Sp- floating it's space no, garbage. It's no Naboo Starfighter. <laughs> yeah. All chromed out. <laughs> yeah. It's it kinda it kinda looks close though. It looks like uh, old George Lucas might have might have might have taken a taken a liberty or two with his with his yellow Naboo Starfighters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then like that that giant air brake in the back, like that that uh, that booster on the back there actually rotates. And uh, so he can stop and turn on a dime and change direction. It's really cool. Yeah, the flight scenes were always pretty cool too. Yeah, I, I, I just I love the variety for it. You could have an episode where it was just about something small on the ground between people, cool fight scene, you know, gunfights or space combat. You know, hey, <laughs> you never know. All in like what 23, 26 episodes? Like twenty six. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah that's, that's cool. Crazy. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, Justin, you know, uh, Cowboy Bebop kind of, you know, blends a couple genres, you know, you got the sci-fi elements, you got the Western elements and stuff like that, you know, as something that came out of the late nineties when kind of art was changing, uh, do you, do you, do you think that Cowboy Bebop influenced other, uh, other areas of pop culture? Do you think that uh, there yeah. other maybe influenced? I mean, I, th- I think that it touches on classic elements and then definitely reinvents them. Uh, I think like a show like Firefly, uh, which you only got whatever eleven or thirteen episodes, but it got canceled, obviously. But they had that movie, and Serenity is. I actually enjoy Serenity more than the show, but I'm, I might be in the minority on that one. But um, I just love the. On paper, it sounds like cowboys and and space should just be the coolest thing in the world. And then you got cowboys and aliens, and that movie totally flops. So I don't. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what the, the right formula is, but on paper, it sounds like it's amazing. You know, even like uh, something like Solo, right? The the Star Wars story where that definitely has some Western vibes to it, you know, and there's like a like romanticizing the gunslinger and stuff like that. And uh, I think there's a lot of really cool elements and it's Cowboy Bebop that can that is really successful in in calculating that formula and making it work. And so I don't know if the answer is a movie or if it is a 26 episode arc, but uh, there's something magical that's happening in Cowboy Bebop that I don't necessarily think has been able to be recreated since. Steve been close. His voice. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, what do you think, AJ? What do you think is the is the lasting effect and why Cowboy Bebop is is so beloved? You know, twenty almost 23 years later, it's you know where you know, there's been millions of anime in between, but why, why do some stick with us, like, especially why does Cowboy Bebop stay with us? I mean, to me, I, I feel like, you know, Cowboy Bebop is definitely that classic because anime now doesn't, well, I wouldn't say now, but I feel like how anime works now is a lot different than how storytelling was for them back then you know so like justin said there's a sort of overall arch but like most of the time it's just episodic and nowadays that's just considered uh you know a slice of life which is more comedic but here for cowboy bebop you know you're getting a little bit of the comedy you're getting the action and you're getting that drama all into one package uh and for me what sticks the most with cowboy bebop is definitely the music and I think even going 20 years later, even from now, you know, that jazz music, like the moment the end of the episode hits with, mm. uh, what's the song for uh, real folk blues real or folk. something. Yeah. Like as soon as that music hits, you're like, Oh man, that was good. So it sticks with you. You know, there's something, it resonates. Yeah. The opening and ending for bebop is one of the mm-hmm. few anime openings and endings that I never skip. Mm-hmm. Ever. You watch, you, you, you know, you watch tank in the beginning, you watch real folk blues at the end. Mm-hmm. All the way. <laughs> yeah. There's something about style, how stylized even Tank is, too. That's I think that's what's eye-catching for for such a series is that you know 
in terms of like how anime is now, where it's just like, oh, we'll show a couple scenes of the plot, we'll show some characters, or oh, we'll show the bad guy. But here, you're you're getting like this, you know, noir kind of vibe with these jazzy with these jazz sounds. So right. No. You you remember when um in the X Men cartoon, the nineties X Men cartoon, as soon as the music kicked on and you knew that the <laughs> X Men were there to kick some major ass, I think that Cowboy Bebop is like that in a lot of ways. Like yeah. when um. When Spike is going to the Red Dragon headquarters at the end there, and the music comes on, and you're just like, "Oh my god, this is <laughs> happening!" <laughs> that's that's such a cool feeling. Yeah, yeah. it's going yeah. down. No, yeah. yeah, Bebop is definitely that. That's a once in a lifetime kind of mm-hmm. in our form. Yeah, I, I think it was last year too. Like they did this uh, special orchestra on YouTube where they got uh, several different artists. And like some rappers or so to like do the whole real folks blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. at the end of it, you know, they had uh, Steve do like his little his uh, bang at the end of it, and I was caught off guard by that. And I was just like, wow, yeah, like, that hit was really good. Even though I've heard this song over a million times, hearing at the end just the bang, I'm like, right. oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming. So <laughs> good and job on Funimation. When when shows come back. Um, if you get a chance to go to a, a Cowboy Bebop panel, you should go. Like I, I went to one where they got all the voice actors together, and you could tell that they like this wasn't just like a role for them. Like they 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 really loved it. They put a lot of themselves into it, and it actually got a, it, it got it got really emotional. They were hugging people. It was great. Uh, Steve showed off that he actually got the sound wave pattern of the last word of the show. Uh, you know, when he said "bang," tattooed on his arm. Oh, like oh wow. Like they are, they are about that bebop life. <laughs> you just see them in a, in a panel. Definitely go. You will not regret it, man. <laughs> well, we got to go to a convention first. One day. <laughs> I believe. Well, maybe we'll have to host one. You know, we'll have a virtual panel, one of our events or something like that. We'll see if we can get everyone involved. Um, now, now, David, you know, this is kind of a, you know, some anime go on forever. You know, One Piece is almost at a thousand episodes. You know, Dragon Ball's got over six hundred episodes. You know. Cowboy Bebop having such a uh, a tight story, you know, it's only 26 episodes. Do you think that goes a long way to helping not only, um, you know, make a more direct through line, you know, to where we can follow the narrative and it, it clearly has a really plotted out story, uh, but do you also think that it helps people find it because it's less intimidating? So do you think that the limited number of episodes helps or hurts Cowboy Bebop? I, I think it, I think it's, it's appropriate. Cause like, you know, like, um, you know, people don't know I, I, I do comics on, on the side. One of the things that I always try and keep in mind is you don't extend a story and you don't try and shorten it. You you just tell the story. And some animes need 50 episodes. Some animes need 700 plus episodes. But Bebop was good right where it was at. It, it wasn't too short. It wasn't too long. And, and, and it was perfect. And like you said, because it's less intimidating with the episode count, it is easier to get into. Um, of course, I think most people in America at this point, I mean, we all just saw it on repeat for like 10 years. On, on TV. <laughs> but if by some chance you haven't seen it, it's it's not a big thing. Like you, you could you could do it in a weekend. You know, right. you, you can get in and out real quick <laughs> and have your life change forever. <laughs> in, in, the, in the binge culture that we live in, yeah, you can get through it in a week. Yeah, or a weekend, rather. Yeah. Yeah. It's on Hulu. It's streaming on Hulu, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I like that you said some some anime have to be seven hundred episodes. I'm like, do no. they? <laughs> only only some, not everyone. Like, there's some one one that I won't name that just <laughs> it won't stop. It Can't won't stop, stop. stop. It it's needs to stop. It needs it's, it's time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> there's this comment we have with the Ed and Ein combo pack. I a hundred percent agree. I would love to see an Ein and Ed combo pack from. Uh, SH. Uh, also, like uh, even on our chats, you know, Edward Garcia is also asking, you know, are we gonna are we gonna release any more Cowboy Bebop figures? Uh, and you know, I would like to see the whole crew, especially yeah. Jet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Faye was teased, I think, at Toy Fair last year. Mm-hmm. Was it? Um, but yeah, it'd be she's, cool to have the whole ship do. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's doing her thing. She's leaving. She'll be back broke. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Damon, uh, you made that comment. Uh, you know, he's representing Gunpla in the LBC. So, uh, yeah. him on uh, on Instagram, I think he's uh, either LBC Gunpla or uh, Gunpla LBC. So, uh, yeah. give him a follow. And if Faye comes with debts too, so be prepared to have to pay those off <laughs> if you buy the figures. <laughs> That's funny. It's a lot of debt. Bears. 
Now, now Netflix is going to be doing a live action uh, remake of Cowboy Bebop. You know, uh, the animation is so stylized. You know, it's so unique. It's you know, I think all three of you have at some point pointed out, you know, um, how incredible it is animated animated style. Justin, do you think that this is a property that's right for a transition to live action, or are you concerned that you'll some of what makes Bebop cool is that animate that that stylization that you can only accomplish through animation? So normally I would probably say that it should only be an anime, but I think after seeing movies like uh, like Dick Tracy, you know, I had a really uh, you know, lush full color palette. And I think that it could be stylized in a way like that, or even like speed racer. Uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of the movie <laughs> speed racer. I'm like, well, there's only a handful of people on this planet that enjoy it. And I'm one of them. And I think that they literally turned uh, that cartoon into life. And so it's definitely possible. I think that it has to be a, a passion project. I think it has to be a love letter to the series. And I think that everyone on board has to be a fan of, the original to make it work. I, I I think this is one of those ones where it's cool to to kind of deviate from the source material, but it's the just the overall aesthetic and the vibe and the the emotion that comes from that show is what makes it amazing. And so it would be difficult to capture, but I think it is possible. There's a lot of creative people out there, but I do think that a lot of care and consideration would need to go into making it into a live action series and we've seen like those sci-fi kind of movies too like those western sci-fi movies i mean some are good some are bad but you know i think you're right it has to definitely be that love letter to uh the series itself and if you don't know your source material then you know it's right. a it'll instantly be a flop right and hopefully they know it it only takes a weekend to watch it <laughs> right <laughs> only 26 <laughs> episodes the good thing is the good thing is because it's not like something fantastic like say Avatar or Dragon Ball, which God help us on the, on those things. What the, it's more, you, I, you can watch an evolution. <laughs> Dragon Ball evolutions? I I still have nightmares. <laughs> um, it, it 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 seems like this should be more achievable. You know, like there's not like no one's blowing up a planet with their hands or flying through the sky on a, you know out of a ship. So it should be doable. I I, I want it to be good. Mm -hmm. I mm. really, really do. But the meme of the Netflix adaptation of things. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for yeah. But, but I mean, you're right. I mean, like even like fight scenes like Kill Bill could easily translate well into like Cowboy Bebop, you know, like he's yeah. fighting in enclosed spaces, like in the kitchen right. at the beginning of Kill Bill or at the, the club where she's taking on all the, the Yakuza. Uh, it is it's definitely doable. It just cool. needs to be the right people. Uh, yeah. putting it together. So get their choreographer <laughs> from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Zoe Bell the Solutions yeah. is on Hulu, so you could always watch it. I watched it the other day and had the time of my life. It is so bad. <laughs> you have it on repeat, <laughs> just on loop constantly. It is, it, it is It is my to Justin's Batman and Robin. It is, oh, man. It is so bad. And <laughs> I, just, I just had a smile just laughing at how ridiculous it was. And, you know, it was it was so fun. Like I, I think it's. I think if we ever get back to convention season, you know, I would love to do like a public screening of Dragon Ball Evolutions with like a Dragon Ball crowd and just like Rocky Horror Picture Show and just have everyone just having the time <laughs> of their life just watching this. This nice that is pretty really fun though. Like back uh, back when I was in college, uh, Kyle Haber, uh, the guy who does uh, I think I think he did Gohan. I think he also does uh, the next time on Dragon Ball Z Voice. He actually came to uh, to, to my uh, my college and he he did a screening of the movie. And he did a comment. Uh, he commented over the whole time, and it made it so much more enjoyable with him ripping on the movie every second. Of <laughs> it just made it so much better. <laughs> Previously on Dragon Ball Z, you don't need to know anything. This movie has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Piccolo. Uh, <laughs> oh, but sorry to derail the conversation over to terrible adaptations of beloved anime. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully, the Netflix version of uh, Cowboy Bebop will be much better than both Please. Avatar and uh, Dragon Ball. Please. The bar is set pretty low. It's not even here. It's like, it's like, it's like here. Hey, well, you know, if any anime could break the curse of having bad Hollywood adaptations, it would be Bebop. Um, would be I'm pretty sure Speed Racer took care of that. <laughs> yes, if anyone could break it, it would be Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm on the speed racer train with Justin. Uh, I we've been uh, we've been fans of the Wachowski speed racer since like it, it, it was in the theater and uh, yeah, it's it, it's such a good movie. 
so much fun. Oh my god, love it. The recent at the end, and he's got like the voiceover. <laughs> yeah, someone opened a window. This flower is a Wilton. And Jack Lost is watching from like the stands, and I'm like. Uh, yeah, now we're talking. But yeah. I mean, and Netflix has you know they got big bucks. They got uh, they got all kinds of production value that goes into their series, and I think that uh, they could they could do it. I do think it's possible. Yeah. In a in a in a Blade Runner, Kill Bill, Dick Tracy kind of world, I think it would it would really work. Yeah, I hope so. I, I've only seen I think one anime be adapted to like live action that I think. Really worked well, and that was the Rowan Kenshin series. So Clay and just mentioned that in our chat. You yeah. know what about the Rowan Kenshin live action? Those are pretty good too. So yeah, no, that, that, those, those movies were fire, but mm-hmm. not Hollywood though. That, that was done in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I think Netflix has had to see what Disney Plus has been doing, and you know they've been knocking out of the park with their live action, you know, series. You know, they took sure they took stuff that was traditionally movies and turned it into TV, but the production quality, you know, even Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, in Walking Dead, you know, the, these really, really, if they want to make this impactful, like, must-see programming, you know, they're going to have to meet that level of production quality. And if if they try to cheap out or if it just isn't up to snuff, you know, these fans leave them apart. But I think Netflix has the financial backing to put the money into it to, to make sure they have the right people. And uh, I think the only thing they're going to have to worry now is, you know, what are they going to change? You know, Justin, I mentioned how important smoking is to... You know, Cowboy Bebop is an anime. They're smoking. Yeah, he's gonna be vaping. <laughs> Spike's gonna leave a vaping competition. No. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of stigma and a lot of uh, rating implications as far as like smoking on on screen, especially in live action. So, I don't know, rate rate of, you... nothing. <laughs> I don't know. Gan- Gandalf had a pipe. We can get away with that. <laughs> we can do it. Works with Gandalf, but yeah. As long as Bruce Bale blows uh, like smoke ships and stuff, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Game of Thrones, and what's important to remember is it didn't have those ridiculous budgets in the early seasons. In the first season alone, like when they're marching up the King's Road to get to to uh, what is it, Winterfell, yeah, and. Uh, there's like eight people in with the king. <laughs> it's like the whole King's Landing was un, was unleashed to go to Winterfell, and it's like eight dudes. And then when they have like the the jousting tournament, it looks like you know the the first match of Little League, where there's just a handful of parents in the bleachers on a Sunday morning or something like that. And you know it's supposed to be this huge tournament welcoming the hand of the king, and there's literally five people in the stands, and they're all family members. <laughs> So you're like, okay. <laughs> when Robert Baratheon gets killed by the boar, you know, it's, it's you basically see off screen. It. Yeah. It's him, Lancel, and like two other people. You know, yeah. So I mean, like this big, this big boar hunt. So, and, and I know that, uh, that, uh, the, the anime crowd is, uh, is, uh, what, there's, there's, a, there's a fervor, yeah. There's a vocal, yeah. Everyone's <laughs> vocal, and we all have our opinions. <laughs> Very protective of properties, and so uh, it w- it could be throwing a lamb to the wolves as far as the critics are concerned. I mean, because you uh, we all saw the Death Note movie, right? Mm-hmm. On Netflix, yeah. It's hard was, to do, man. That was, <laughs> like if they just made it someone else and not light, like, it would have been fine. But they they messed up. It was very simple. They could have fixed it. And I hope they've learned from that so that they don't mess up one of the greatest anime legends of all time. <laughs> yeah. Give him a lollipop. They can have like this giant novelty lollipop instead of cigarettes. That would be pretty great. Oh god. <laughs> like as long as they don't cut the music out. You know, if they don't if they at least incorporate the jazz, I'll give it some uh, you know, I'll give it some props, but if they t- cut that out, oh yeah. You will get a hefty comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna write a letter to your congressman. Yeah. That's gonna be it's gonna be a problem. All right. If they want to update the music, they better go bring back everyone from the original crews who did the opening and ending and have them do something new. Then it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. That's your only option. Is that or play the original? <laughs> thing. Please. Yeah. Well, let's fast forward a year. Let's pretend Cowboy Bebop comes out on Netflix. It's an enormous success. Everyone, critics, everyone loves it. Does huge numbers for Netflix, and you know. Hollywood is uh, definitely a fan of taking ideas that have worked and running with it. So now every anime is on the table that they want to make into a live action series. What, Mr. Clark, is the first one that you want to see out of the gate? You know, there's another popular anime that you saw as a youth that has 26 episodes that's uh, 
It's a it's a mech based Evangelion <laughs> show. Uh, do, you oh, think, do you think we could ever see a live action Evangelion? And what if not? What would you like to see in live action? I remember hearing rumblings about them trying to do it, but it I don't I don't think I don't think we can do that. I <laughs> just we have to cut out so much. <laughs> um, I, if I if I had a chance to make any anime into a movie, I would like to do a two, maybe three movie series of uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS team. Because it's basically like, it's like Vietnam, but robots. And it, it's grounded. Yes. <laughs> there, isn't, there isn't like new type space magic. It's just a story of like this group of people trying to survive. And then also like a Romeo and Juliet kind of story, but also robots. So I think it was really good. It's really relatable. It's, a, it's like a 13 episode anime so it can be adapted relatively easily and um it's gundam so i mean yeah <laughs> gundam is life yeah. uh yeah definitely in the chat let us know what uh what anime you think a would transition well into live action and uh, and b what what you would like to see sky's the limit type stuff and so aj i'll bring the same question to you that, that we posed to mr clark uh is there anything is there anything you would like to see animation go to live action or do you believe that you know, keep animation, keep anime animated, you know, do something else in live action. You know, some things are better in some modes that are not in another. I think, I think, you know, bringing anime to live action can work. It's just, you know, there's just steps you have to follow along with it. And I'm also surprised, you know, other than the Gundam one, I, I don't know if Clark was willing to say Naruto, but uh, Naruto wouldn't be too bad. I would just like to see the Ninetale Fox, like, yeah. you know, like, it, I know it's going to be like a CG for it, but you know, it is with live people, so I would like to see because they have done Attack on Titan already live action. No, so. no, for, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. But also, I didn't say Naruto because they, they are, I, I, I don't know if it's Lionsgate. Somebody actually is working on one right now. Do they? Okay. I know that they do like those live theater shows that uh, Japan likes to do a lot of, so it's technically, it sort of exists, but not in the theater format. No. I know one of our comments said Samurai Champloo. Uh That was a good series too at that time. I, I'd be down for that series as well. Yeah. That would be really good, actually. Yeah. Justin, what would you like to see transition? Keeping in mind that it's already been done perfect twice with Speed Racer and the Michael Bay Transformers. <laughs> right, so, right. No, outside, outside, outside of those two amazing films, <laughs> I will take no, no flack that the first Transformer movie is not amazing. <laughs> What Dude, I don't like even like the second one. I, I, I'm just that guy. <laughs> I like the Toro in the, in the second one. Oh, I know. He's like, like let's, let's not get stuff. episodic old timer. Just give me the, the details, facts, plot, tell it. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, one, one man betrayed by the country he loves. Yeah, no, that's so great. She's got some great moments when, like, uh, when Sam has to separate from his family and, like, oh, I know. To, like, just save the day, and then yeah. Optimus Prime and Jeff Park getting together. I, I will definitely give you the two is also good. And Bumblebee. I would say one, two, and Bumblebee. I love Bumblebee, Bumblebee. especially since it's in the Bumblebee. 80s. The music's amazing. I'm, like, rocking out on my on my couch while I'm watching music. <laughs> yeah. Music's yeah. a big deal, man. That that makes it, as AJ was saying, especially for Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. But um, as far as animations, or anime, rather, otherwise I would just say King of the Hill, because <laughs> that's my go-to answer for everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but no, I, I don't know. You mentioned Ninja Scroll earlier, and that that's that movie was so hardcore, man. That was like that was like I mentioned Robocop. That Ninja Scroll was like the <laughs> Robocop of anime for me. That was that was a, a an eye opening experience on what existed on the other side of the planet when it came to what anime was. That was literally one of my very first animes, and I remember I was in college. And I'm like, what the heck is this movie that I'm watching? It was so I'm watching arms get ripped off and people's heads getting chopped off. And it was just so hardcore. And um, I I didn't know what to make. of it. I loved it. I thought it was so cool. But uh, that alone, I think, would be a pretty remarkable <laughs> movie. I mean, we've kind of seen it before. I mean, through multiple decades. But if it was uh, at least that story type but it would be fun to see it transition into live action especially if it was on a platform that knows how to do things right like uh you know netflix or prime or hbo are you thinking this would be a you know a disney reanimate re sure, re yeah, yeah. Well, well, like, midnight <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, with, uh, complete with spoilers two seconds after the episode ends. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to throw a shout out to Clayton because uh, he got me laughing on his comment. He said, Corey in the house. I know, like, for me, that's a meme <laughs> in terms of it's not an anime, but I mean, basically. Like <laughs> basically, so because of the meme factor for it. Good job, Clayton. I would like to see the live action for Corey sure. in the house. <laughs> Did you guys see uh, the last Airbender movie and how terrible that was? Okay, look, um, that was the first <laughs> film I ever wanted a refund for. Like, really? <laughs> when it when it went Earth, I'm like, I'm done. I was already done. <laughs> that first scene. It, it was, was hard to watch. Right? Right? Like, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my girlfriend at the time was a huge fan, and she was willing to put up with it. I'm like, look at this. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. Just to stay, so I, I did it. It, it hurt a lot. <laughs> You're a good man. <laughs> yeah, the uh, um, Airbender was also interesting. It was one of the first ones that they like post converted to like 3D, and when they post converted it, they made it like super mega ultra dark. And if you went to see it in 3D, you couldn't even see anything. It was so dark and silly. And uh, oh, yes. Mr. Shyamalan. I was never fond of those like 3D movies. Like you have to, you know, it's meant more for 3D. All right, can I just watch it without it? Oh, <laughs> I, I wear know. glasses. Uh, yeah, I already wear glasses. I don't want to be the glasses on glasses kind of guy. <laughs> the best is when you go see a movie that is also in 3D, but you watch the 2D version, and then there's like just that scene where something flies at the screen. And you're just like, oh yeah, this is this was made for 3D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I remember Avatar when they're floating in space. I'm like, oh yeah, this would have been a 3D scene. John's in 3D. <laughs> yeah. I remember I saw Avatar in 3D on IMAX and it was like $22 for a ticket in like 2009. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie. I don't want to, I don't want to own it. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, that's probably the ideal motion picture show to watch in IMAX in 3D. If it's going to be anything that that's probably one of your best choices, but yeah, not like Garfield takes Manhattan or whatever the title is. <laughs> right. Uh, Glenn Gary Glenn goes, Ross in 3D. He goes to London and he takes over as the Queen's cat? Come on, AJ. You're better than that. Uh, <laughs> oh, totally. It's Bill Murray, just because just because he got burned, because Bill Murray has no manager. And so when he heard that the director was Joel Cohen, he thought it was the other Joe Cohen who directs <laughs> with his brother Ethan, who are the Cohen brothers, who are amazing films. Uh, he didn't realize it was Joel Cohen. And uh, why he thought the Cohen brothers were going to be doing a Garfield live action movie is beyond me, but you know. He got, he got too excited and hit accept. <laughs> I guess so. This is now the Garfield live stream. Sure. He likes lasagna and hates Mondays. <laughs> yeah. And poor Nermal, the, the cute gray cat. Oh. What can you do? Oh. And that's the end of the Garfield live <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I mean that's 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 sort I'm not sort fish. That's Cowboy Bebop. Um, do you guys have anything to add about Cowboy Bebop and its lasting legacy within both anime and collectibles? Uh, watch it if you haven't gotten a chance. It's definitely a, like David Clark said, a life changing thing. It is definitely one of the animes you should be checking out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it got me into jazz as a kid, which I thought was boring. But yeah, I think yeah, originally nice. I wanted to learn to play the saxophone like in middle school. And I think I was this was before I got a chance to watch like Cowboy Bebop. But then like after, and like I didn't even actually learn to play the saxophone, but after I saw Cowboy Bebop, I kicked myself in the butt for not learning to play it. I'm like, damn, I could have. <laughs> yeah. I could have uh, been Bebop. Yeah. That's how you do it. Saxophone's cool, man. You get to wear the sunglasses when you play. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you gotta play like at the beach with like a like a shirt open though. Yeah, <laughs> I saw, I saw uh, working with me. <laughs> yeah, you got Lisa Simpson. You got uh, California Raisin. Yeah, there's a lot of cool sax players out there. You got sure, that. every music video in the '80s. <laughs> every song in the '80s had a saxophone. Even Rick James is like, "Blow, Daddy!" <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you got a uh, weapon. Every yeah. scene has a transition with a saxophone. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. You're too old for this stuff. <laughs> um, sex. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thanks everyone for joining us for our uh, our live stream uh, dedicated to Cowboy Bebop. Remember, you can get the Cowboy Bebop bundle that includes the Swordfish 2 and the Vicious on bluefinbrands.com for only $80. 
ton of other uh, bundles, you know, Dragon Ball, Marvel, uh, you know, Conan, uh, Case Closed, sorry. We got uh, we got Street Fighter stuff, so much stuff. You know, go to bluefinbrands.com, pick it all up. While you're there, you're already on there. Might as well try to win something. Go to bluefinbrands.com slash contest. Uh, we're giving away a ton of Gundam items. We're going to give away a perfect grade uh, RX-78, along with just a ton of other Gundam kits. Uh, you know, there will be multiple winners. Uh, we'll try to get the full list of everything we're giving out uh, up on the website in just a, a day or so. Uh, but the list is massive. Uh, it is not only Gundam. There are a couple non-Gundam items, but the vast majority is Gundam, so it's a Gundam contest. But uh, one of the other things is also going to be one of the 1-5,000 scale Star Destroyers, um, which uh, everyone uh, knows and loves from Star Wars. But it's just as the page up, you know, there are many ways to enter. Uh, a lot of them are follow us on social media. If you're not a social media person or uh, don't want to don't want to do that, you at the bottom there are links to to visit our website to check out some of our deals. Just click on the link, you know, look around the website. Hopefully, you see something you like, uh, and uh, there you go. You're entered to win some Gundam prizes. You can enter as many times or as few times as you want. Uh, a lot of the entries, some of the entries are daily, so make sure you come back every day and do it. There's even that yellow daily bonus there to where if you accomplish a certain amount of tasks in a given day, you, know, you get extra bonus entries and stuff like that. So. Bluefinbrands.com slash contest. And like Justin and AG will tell you, make sure to follow us at Bluefinbrands to keep up with everything. We will have no live stream tomorrow on Wednesday, but Thursday we will be coming back at 11 o'clock. We'll be talking about Transformers and how just incredible they are <laughs> and why they are more than meets the eye and why the first Transformers is an incredible movie, despite what Mr. Clark might say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready yeah, Michael it. Bay and explosions and helicopter shots and all yeah. kinds of cool things. Megan Fox and little channels are hot. Big <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, so that is all. Thank you everyone for joining us. Remember to enter to win uh, the Swordfish 2 that we're giving away. Just leave us a comment. Let us know. You know, anything. You know, what anime you'd like to see made into a live action series. Who your favorite character is from Cowboy Bebop. You know, what you think of the Swordfish. Maybe even show us a picture. Where would you put this bad boy? You know, it is it, it is a cool shelf piece, uh, and it comes with a nice a nice stand that uh, let everyone know this is the Swordfish too. So uh, yeah, follow us at Bluefin Brands. Leave a comment. Can't wait to talk to you guys on Thursday, and we will see you guys then. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.